Hello and welcome. My name is Frances Billinghurst and thank you for coming back to my channel. If you are new, I bid thee welcome and there is a subscribe button and a bell below if you wish to be notified when I upload more content, which I do on a rather ad hoc basis. In this video, I just want to share some thoughts that appear from my first book, Dancing the Sacred Wheel, Journey Through the Southern Sabbaths, and I'll be reading from the first edition about the autumn equinox, because this is the time we are currently in here in the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm just going to share my screen so you don't need to look at my bad hair at the moment that I'm having. But before I start, I just want to acknowledge country. I acknowledge the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, who are the traditional custodians of this land upon which I'm doing this recording. And in doing so, I pass, pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Autumn equinox, the time of ecstasy. As the sun enters the sign of Pisces, those of us in the Southern Hemisphere find ourselves at a time of equilibrium once again, when the hours of light and darkness are equal. At the spring equinox, the energy was manifesting before action. Now here at the autumn equinox, it is repose after actions. We take satisfaction in the work undertaken during the warmer months and now are reaping its benefits. Daylight savings is also about to come to an end and with it the realization that summer is well and truly over. It is a time to make preparations for the colder winter months if we have not already been doing so. Completion, preparation, and it may even be an element of grief, longing, as the days get shorter and darkness increases. The leaves from all the deciduous trees are beginning to turn. And close to me, up through the Adelaide Hills, this colour is absolutely magnificent. And soon the abundance of earth will lie fallow. The outward gracious energies of the year are now reaching their climax. And in the skies above us, a lot has been happening. Taurus the bull, which is here, is low in the northwest. We have the Southern Cross here in the southwest as well. And Leo looking very much like an upside down question mark or a coat hanger is Leo high in the skies. The Pleiades are disappearing from sight. You can see them here. The Milky Way arches from the northwest to the southeast across the sky. Orion the hunter and his two dogs Ennis Major and Minor are dominating the horizon. There's Canis Major there and Canis Minor there. And Orion about is here. There's three stars. For the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, the autumn equinox is noted by the arrival of a star called Pana or Panati, a star that appears close to the moon. 
and indicates the time for building waterproof houses before the autumn rains arrive. And it's interesting to note that in modern astrology or astronomy, they still don't understand where Pana is in the skies. South of us, the Naranjiri people of the Kurong talk about the far distant Del Star Amangarangi, the crow, who marks the end of his journey by arriving at the river we know today as the Murray River, healing the season of roaring gales in the west. The people begin to stock up on wood and add supplies to their food stalls in preparations to the cooler months. So here we are moving into Paranti. In the cold morning sea fogs and dew and the wattle gums are carved to build canoes and shelters. And the Ghana people move inland from the coast into the foothills, creating shelters from the forming fallen limbs from the trees. And in Kakadu, still in Bangagirin, moving in, as the wheel of the year turns. And it's the last of the heavy storms to arrive in the wet season that flattens the spare grass. As the winds turn towards the southeast, the fish start to return to the rivers, having bred along the floodplains. The saltwater crocodiles so fiercely guard their nests, and the waters begin to recede from the billabongs and the long net turtles are on the outlook for places to lay their egg. Within contemporary witchcraft, the god changes his appearance once more from the aging sun god that appeared at the summer solstice, the corn or grain god at Lanasa or Lamas, He's now taking his guise as the Lord of the Wine, represented at the second harvest, that of the fruit and grape, where here he is known as Bacchus in ancient Rome, and also as Dionysus by the ancient Greeks. And to the Romans as Bacchus, he was not only the god of wine, but also music and dance. And as he calls to us in his dance, the God's presence becomes more shadowy as he is drawn to the call of the underworld. This call can be heard in the sigh of the wind through the trees. And if we are quick, we can gain a glimpse of him in the shadows of the early dusk. He leads us to the hidden inward places of our souls and asks us, to explore our inner self. The goddess in full knowledge of her beloved will soon be leaving her side for his journey into the underworld and she is preparing her own departure. She will soon take on another guise that of one great knowledge and wisdom when she changes into the wise crone. She has seen life and death and therefore fully understands the sacred mystery. And it is at this time that in ancient Greece, the greater mysteries that were held at Eleusis were taking place. These rites were connected with Demeter and Persephone. and moved into the underworld. Of course, it's the time of the harvest and with the harvest completed, lots of merriment and celebration to be had. And I love this poem by Emily Bronte. Fall leaves fall. 
die flowers away lengthen night and shorten day every leaf speaks bliss to me fluttering from the autumn tree and in doing so that's a perfect time to undertake our own journey into the inner mysteries to close our eyes and recall the harvest that we have undertaken what seeds did we plant at Imok? what was harvested at midsummer or Anasa, depending on where you are at the time of the world. What didn't come to fruition? And now we're in the season of release to let go, to surrender. What shall you remove from your life? releasing like an autumn leaf. We have sown, we have tended, we have grown, we have gathered, we have reaped a great harvest. Lady Goddess, we thank you for your gifts. Lord God, we thank you for your bounty. What are you grateful for? And in closing, just thought I'd like to share these two snippets. First from George Eliot, but the delicious autumn. My very soul is wedded to it. And if I were a bird, I would fly about the earth seeking the successive autumns. and an autumn equinox blessing. The light and the dark are the same in length. They have equal time and equal strength. But soon the darkness will prevail and the light and the warmth will begin to pale. But do not be afraid, do not despair, for this is the rhythm of nature's way. Rejoice in the abundance that this year bears. Breathe deep in the coolness and the change in the air. Have gratitude and blessing. Keep toll. And may the shift of nature enlighten your soul. Copies of Dancing the Sacred Wheel can be purchased through Lula Noir Creations, which is my Etsy store, where you'll get a signed copy. You can also find that the book online through a number of online distributors around the world. If you are in Adelaide, South Australia, you can also purchase signed copies from me at the various markets. And you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. So that is a very brief 
bit of an introduction or journey through the autumn equinox. This year it's happening actually tomorrow the 21st of March here in Adelaide, South Australia. So I hope your harvest has been wise and bountiful as we move now into the deeper mysteries of the turning of the will. Blessings, thank you for joining me. <laughs>